The game that I'm playing is called Nuclear Throne. This game portrays a post-apocalyptic era in which humans are extinct and mutants and monsters are roaming the new world. In the game, it looks essentially like, as the main character, I'm fighting my way through the scum and waste of the leftover Earth with nuclear weaponry and collecting radiation along the way. The ultimate goal in this game is to get the throne by beating all the levels. This also means collecting as much radiation as possible because this is how you level up in the game and using nuclear weapons in order to destroy the target. A key element in many games, including this one, is procedural rhetoric. As cited in the Bogos lecture, procedural rhetoric is the art of persuasion through rule-based representation and interactions rather than spoken words or images. In other words, it implies that the rules of the game can have meaning to them, how they're played, the procedure, and mechanic can make arguments and claims as well as persuade audiences or tell us something about culture. In this game, procedural rhetoric works in concert with the auditory and visual effects in order to make a statement about society that it is self-destructing and it also serves as a warning of the dangers of nuclear weaponry and that nuclear proliferation will eventually lead to disaster. The game allows us to learn this lesson vicariously. Let's first focus on the procedural rhetoric and how an understanding of expressive processing in media can translate into a greater understanding of how these processes work and sometimes fail in society. This is cited by Annette V in Procedural Rhetoric and Expression in 2010 on page 345. First, in playing the game, we can note some of the basic rules of the game. Rule number one. For the most part, the monsters do not come after you unless you come after them first. This is, of course, with a few minor exceptions. Rule number two. When you kill creatures in the game, you can get health packs, extra ammo, energy, or radiation. Rule number three, the health packs and other benefits are only available for a few seconds and you can only pick them up if you are willing to risk going out into the open. Rule number four, when you collect a certain amount of radiation, you can level up and choose a mutation such as growing new limbs or shooting through walls. These rules may seem basic, but Bogos argues that games deploy more abstract representations about the way the world does or should function. This is cited by Bogos in Persuasive Games in 2007. We can delve into what this means by breaking down each of these rules. 
The monsters not coming after you unless you attack them first is akin to bacteria. Only about 1% of bacteria are actually pathogenic, while the rest are actually good for you. But humans rush to use antibiotics, antibacterial soaps, and cleaning products, and other agents that claim to kill 99.99% of bacteria and microbes. However, overusing antibiotics and antimicrobial agents will only lead to bacteria becoming resistant via natural selection and, in a sense, fighting back. The 1% of pathogens represents the minority of characters in the game that attacked without being attacked first. This is mainly the small, easily killable creatures that resembled worms. This rule can also be representational of the US getting involved in wars in foreign matters that we have no business being a part of and would not have been if we did not invade foreign countries or instigate matters. This leads to an economic crisis and, if nuclear weaponry is involved, a probable health crisis. The next rule in the game is that killing characters allows you the opportunity to collect benefits. This exemplifies society's ultimate solution, war. War is seldom fought for the sake of fighting. Wars are started to take the riches of another country, or to take the land of another country, or to weaken another country so that the winner surpasses the defeated and can economically prosper. Moreover, the character is rewarded for killing, further exemplifying society's emphasis on the importance of battle. Continuing on, such benefits are only available for a very short amount of time and the player can only receive them if he or she is risky enough to do so. When playing the game, I found myself most likely to make a run for it when either the benefit outweighed the risk and the coast was clear, or I was very desperate because I had low health and or low ammo and I knew that I would not be able to survive the rest of the game unless I made a run for it. So this gives the player an insight into what really motivates humans, which is a higher probability for reward or desperation. This essentially plays on the statement Desperate times calls for desperate measures, meaning that people will do almost anything when they are desperate, which may be very bad in some situations, such as a world leader threatening another world leader with nuclear weaponry, for example. Finally, Nuclear Throne has a rule that when a player levels up, he or she is able to choose one mutation. This goes back to the idea of bacteria and other microbes. Humans are pushing bacteria and viruses to mutate and evolve by overusing antimicrobial agents. Such overuse is unnecessary and is doing more harm than good to our world. It also circles around the idea of carcinogenic mutations related to radiation. Radiation is a known cause of mutagens 
and the aftermath of nuclear war could lead to a huge healthcare crisis. In Nuclear Throne, the auditory and visual effects work with the procedural rhetoric in order to emphasize how society is self-destructive. Going through the game, the environment appeared to be waste-filled and scummy with radiation everywhere. Furthermore, the characters used nuclear weaponry, hence the name of the game Nuclear Throne. So players were able to switch between different weapons. This gave the sense of a grimy, unkept disaster area and made it clear that there had been a huge explosion or nuclear disaster here. Furthermore, it evokes fear for the future. Especially now, nuclear weapons are becoming a larger threat to society, and the aftermath of that would be the dirty, radiation-filled environment depicted in the game. Everything else on the screen, including the characters, setup menu, and even the weapons, were very bright and contrasted with the tan, waste-filled surroundings of the game further emphasizing the severity of the apocalyptic-like situation. So that was my take on the visual aspect. In terms of the auditory, there is no talking in the game, but rather grunting when a player was injured, as well as background noise and the sound of weapons. This all intensified the warlike feel of the game. The suspenseful background music, grunting, and weapons firing combined with the visuals all make for an intense tone. In combination with the procedural rhetoric, this adds to the overarching theme of the game that is the destruction of humanity and society. Of course, games are entertaining, but they are much more than that. Video games can be used for means beyond entertainment and serve as a legitimate medium for social commentary, art making, and other editorial pursuits. This is cited by Trainer and Mateus in 2009. This is because video games are unique in that video games are often interactive in a particular way. They require user action to complete their procedural representation. This is cited by Bogos in 2007. So they are so effective because they have these rules that players must follow in order to be able to interact with the game. And it is the interaction rather than passive listening that allows for an in-depth engagement. This brings us back to the main idea of procedural rhetoric, which is that there is meaning in the play itself and in the rules and procedures in the game. Nuclear Throne did not even have any words in the game other than ones that ex other than the ones that explain the rules and setup. Yet through the rules, visuals, and auditory effects the game was able to make a strong claim about society's self-destructing nature and naive attitude towards nuclear weapons and shed light on the possible future of our world at the rate we are going. As a final note, Nuclear Throne was the game that I have never played before, but I really did enjoy playing it. I feel that a major reason that I enjoyed it is because I was able to find meaning in the game. I think that's one of the main reasons we should care about these different elements of games and game studies. It allows us to play games 